Hey everyone, this is Clint, and this is Sweetcast. Welcome. So it's Saturday morning. Normally I'd be doing a live stream right now, uh, but that's not going to happen today because my wife's going to be gone. She's got a baby shower to go to that's a little ways away, and so I've got to be focused on the children. So this is all pre-recorded, and I th- this is a really important topic. I'd want to talk about it anyway. Uh, so yeah, we'll get into it. But first, I just want to remind you that I'm I'm writing this book. I'm going to be publishing it. It is a comic. It's called Downcast, and it is going to be awesome. So if you're interested in being on the loop here, I've got a link in the description below for my mailing list, so that that you'll be a way you will be in the loop. Okay, so I'm going to read the headline here. How a Twitter Mob Derailed an Immigrant Female Author's Budding Career. Now, I know what you're thinking. Oh, a hate mob? What is this? The alt-right pushed her off, right? Is that the kind of stuff you hear? No. No. That's never actually what happens. This is, of course, a mob of Twitter social justice warriors that decided to destroy somebody's career before it even took off. Uh, So we start with our hero here. Uh, the victim in this case, I'm going to say her name wrong. It's Emily Wen Zhao. Uh, she's a Chinese immigrant. She came to America and she, you know, I guess worked in finance. She did a lot of important stuff and made a name for herself. And she was interested in writing and publishing a book. Now I've done this before. I wrote, uh, two YA novels and they were fun to do. Uh, and I would have killed for this deal. This is a Penguin Random House imprint that she got uh, published under, and it was for a trilogy deal. So not just for this one book, but two more after it. This is literally the dream, and we're talking at least $500,000 advance. So obviously it's, it goes uphill from there. That's fantastic. That means that her book was amazing. They believed in this book enough that it would get published for that much, do a trilogy deal. And yeah, that's a big deal. This is the dream for any YA novelist. The book was, book was called Blood Air, and it had themes in it that had to do with slavery. Now, not like American slavery, from my understanding. This is a fantasy novel, and they're, they're, it, are there just going to be some kind of slavery in it? Okay. Now, last I checked, it doesn't matter who you are or... Uh, what you look like, or really anything, you can write whatever you want. If you want to write about slavery, in fact, I think that's, you know, that's an important topic to know and for people to understand uh, the horrors of slavery. Slavery is still going on today, by the way, in, you know, all around the world, there are different kinds of uh, slavery happening. So for this to be a thing, you would think that would be a good topic to tackle, especially if you're doing it in, you know, a nice entertaining way that young adults are going to enjoy. So what happened? Well, Zoe's troubles appeared to have started last week, but it's impossible to comprehend the precipitous fall without understanding a little bit about the insular, frequently vicious world of YA Twitter. Does that sound familiar? Sounds an awful lot like the world of uh, comics on Twitter. An online community composed of authors, editors, agents, reviewers, and readers that appear to skew significantly older than actual readership for the popular genre of young adult fiction. Okay, so this is important to point out. There are readers, but these are also professionals that work in the industry. This sounds just like the comic industry. Sounds just like uh, many gaming industries, any hobby entertainment. It's the same thing. It's originating in the industry. And yeah, you've got also crazy readers that are involved in it too. And they are dead set on destroying it for everyone. Uh, let's see. As Kat Rosenfeld, a tablet writer who herself is a, a published YA author, wrote in a deeply entertaining vulture feature on the toxic drama on YA Twitter. In the summer of 2017, young adult books are being targeted in intense social media callouts, draggings, and pile-ons sometimes before anybody has even read them. Uh, This was in 2017, and now we've just gone into 2019, and apparently things haven't gotten any better. So this is exactly what happened to her. The problem was with, I guess, slavery, and... Turns out, if you're a Chinese immigrant, you can't talk about slavery. Why are these rules even being made? I don't understand who is making all these rules that the rest of us have to magically comply to, and they're changing. They're moving target all the time. This this same book, same author, maybe two years ago, would have been praised for bravery or something, and now all of a sudden, it's evil. It's a moving target. This is getting 
ridiculous. Uh, so we'll continue down here. But while some of the social justice concerns percolating within YA fiction are legitimate, the explosive manner in which they're expressed within YA Twitter is another story. Okay, so their their problems are with like representation and uh, yeah, you know, character, female characters, how they should be portrayed, people of color, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and this is another weird thing because why is there some like national consensus on Twitter where they decide how characters should be written? That's never been how it how it goes. Like, <laughs> so this is crazy, and that's why you need to expose sunlight to it. This is just like with comics. You have this really close group of people, and they're all on Twitter, and they're all hearing their each other's craziness. And when someone crosses them that doesn't believe in the craziness, uh, then they think that person's out of their mind or they're, they've somehow violated this norm. What the reality is, if you pull the camera back outside of Twitter, you have regular people that read uh, YA fiction. It has nothing to do with what people actually want. They just want good stories, right? They want good stories. Yeah, I mean, be thoughtful. Like, you don't want to be writing stereotypes just because that makes for boring stories. Uh, chances are, I'll bet you money, this story was great because she, she got a massive publishing deal for it. I'm sure it was good. Yeah, so the the threat here is that uh, the pylons would get worse because they'd claim that they're racist. Uh, something would go against social justice, right? They've not only sinned against social justice, but they pose a safety threat to others within the community. This is concept creep. There's no safety. You can write whatever you want. It's not going to affect somebody's safety. This is ridiculous. It's a story. It's not making people unsafe. Quit saying that if someone disagrees with you, then you're not safe anymore. This isn't normal. It's crazy. This is Twitter <laughs> Twitter thought. It's stupid. Okay, so the problem with her was uh, the, the whole slavery thing and that uh, she doesn't deserve to write about it. Now, of course, remember, she's Chinese, uh, but someone explained... Let's see. I don't give a crap that this author is of color. Wow. Internalized racism and anti-blackness is a thing. Okay, here's the thing. They haven't read the book. She even said the book had nothing to do with skin color, had nothing to do with race. The slavery was a totally different element. So rather than read this book, let it exist, uh, you have already determined that it is against social justice and therefore it should not be published. And that's exactly what happened. So after the barrage of craziness, and I'm going to point this out here, uh, Emila here, like you can see from her Twitter thing here, she, her, hers. Usually when people put their pronouns on their Twitter profile, they're relatively, uh, you know, progressive minded, I guess, or they just want to, you know, get along to, to move along. I refuse to do this. I'm not ever going to do that. Uh, but this is, this is really annoying because... She threw in the towel. She says to the book community, I want to start by saying that I have the utmost respect for your voices. I am listening. I am grateful to, to those who have raised questions around representation, coding, <laughs> and things in my book. I imagine from, I immigrated from China when I was 18, drawing on my own multicultural upbringing and the complex history of my heritage that has incidences of bias and oppression. I wrote blood air from my immediate cultural perspective. Okay, so one thing I want to say here, this, to me, this actually reminds me a lot of the Eric Esquivel thing. And if you don't know, he's a comic book writer who got accused. Uh, there were some pretty bad sexual misconduct allegations levied against him. And because he was such a big SJW, uh, everyone ate him alive on Twitter. This is the same thing. Uh, I'm not saying she's a big SJW, but she's obviously trying to appease the, the crazy people. There is no way that you're going to do that. This is only going to turn out negative uh, for you. The theme of this is don't bend the knee. Never bend the knee. Uh, and I'm, that might be hard to do if you're getting attacked. But if you don't care, if you just don't care what they say, I would imagine that this book would actually probably sell better, assuming that the, the publisher didn't bend the knee. If you stuck through it, you put this book out against all the crazy people on Twitter. The thing is you get beyond the craziness and this becomes a news story and normal people hear about this and they know how crazy it is and you're just going to sell more books because the book is of interest. Okay, so yeah, in indentured servant, uh, you know, this is the yeah, human trafficking. Uh, da, da, da. Yeah, so see there are other aspects of slavery that have nothing to do with slavery in America, historical slavery. 
uh, there's still human trafficking going on right now. And she says right here across uh, Asian countries. Okay, here, last paragraph. I was It was never my intention to bring harm to any reader of this valued community. Yeah, this community should not be shaming an author from writing a book based on, honestly, whatever whatever she wants to have a book <laughs> published on. Seriously. Um, I'm going to end with her the last word, apology. Okay, I feel for her. This makes me so upset. This is the same instance when Richard C. Meyer was publishing his book. Uh, he had to deal with Antarctic Press, and a comic book pro, Mark Wade, had to interfere with that. He had to intimidate the publisher uh, so that they would refuse to publish the book. This makes me really upset because the more that you apologize, like you've done something wrong, uh, it actually gives this group of crazy people more power. Never bend the knee. Uh, so comics have found a solution to that. And that is a customer revolt <laughs> called Comicsgate. And, you know, it's it's developing and morphing. This is IndieCron, if you haven't heard of it before. If you have, it, it has been updated. There's some new changes to it, so that's awesome. These are people that are leaving mainstream publishing to do their own thing. Not just that, but to do it with freedom, uh, without being controlled uh, by social justice narratives. So that's an option. One particular one, and I'm, I'm showing you this just because I think it is great to promote people that are doing their own stuff. Night Stalker 1 and 2. This is on Indiegogo. You can find it on IndieCon or go straight to Indiegogo and you'll get there. This is a cool book. I got a chat with the uh, the writer a little bit and uh, it looks really cool. Looks fun. I'm going to scroll down a little bit. If you're interested in supporting somebody publishing their own work, and it has nothing to do with social justice warriors. This, you know, may be of interest to you. So feel free to go check it out. So this, this is frustrating to me. It's hard to hear whenever something like this happens. I really think that the answer is, like I said, don't bend the knee. Don't allow them to bully you into a position where you need to play by their rules. Again, if we look over her, she, her, hers, that's like a, you have to announce to the world uh, that you're playing by their rules. And then... Of course, you've got the whole apology here. This never ends up well. Uh, now her book deal is over. She's pulled out of it. It's it's done. I hope this changes. I hope the publisher can talk to her or this can get out there to, to the normal people because this is absurd. This is ridiculous. Uh, these rules are not for everyone. In fact, they're for nobody. They're, they're made up. This, is, this needs to stop. But I'm wrong all the time, so I'd love to hear what your thoughts are in the comments below. That'd be awesome. Uh, like, that helps. Subscribe, that also helps. And ring the bell, that also helps. Thank you very much, and I will talk to you next time.